We would like to welcome you to this online worship service at Trinity Lutheran Church in Bellingham, Washington. What a wonderful opportunity to join you wherever you're at today to praise our amazing, amazing God who's always there for us. And we just would so love it if you would put on your singing voices and join us with a couple wonderful songs that we're going to start our worship with today. I'm trading my sorrows I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord Celestial feed never failing, ruler of my heart, everlasting, lover of my soul on a mountain high, or in the valley low, the king of love my shepherd is, the king of love my shepherd is. and foolish how fast strayed but yet in love he sought me and on his shoulder gently laid and home rejoicing brought me in death's dark veil I fear no ill with fear the Lord beside me Thy rod and staff my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Never failing, ruler of my heart, everlasting, lover of my soul on a mountain high, or in the valley low, the king of love my shepherd is, the king of love 
my shepherd is. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. As a pastor, do you find occasionally that people struggle with their faith? Definitely. In, in fact, there are times that I struggle. I have a question for you as well. Yes, yes. And actually, it is not so much a question because I know the answer. Do you like riding on roller coasters? I do not like riding on roller coasters. So whenever we'd go to theme parks and the kids wanted to go on roller coasters. You. Yeah, it was me. You, <laughs> was you, went, you. you went on roller coasters. So, so why didn't you like roller coasters? Well, there's only one main primary reason, and that's because they make me sick. <laughs> I don't like the ups and the downs and the fast. and the, I don't like them, and they make me sick. Uh, yeah, maybe that's the case with you, or maybe you're someone who just... Thoroughly enjoys be on, on roller coasters. Yeah. But you asked me that question with regards to struggles. And in some ways, life is like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. It has its ups and its downs. And even with regards to our, our Christian faith, we have that. And there's an interesting uh, verse in Psalm 41. And Kim, would you mind reading these two verses? I'm happy to. It comes from Psalm 40, 16, and 17. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving always say, The Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. As I hear that, it reminds me a little bit of the roller coaster of life. Here, he's encouraging people, what? To rejoice. Say, the Lord is good. He is great. But as he looks at himself, what does he say? I'm poor. I have my needs. I, I have my concerns. As we do all. And yet, because God entered into this world in the person of his son, we can connect to God in a way that is unheard of. We have a God who does care and is there for us. And so as we come to God with our joys as well as our sorrows, we do so in the name of Jesus, asking that God would continue to give us everything that we need. So we invite you to pray with us. Almighty God, we praise you for creating this world and for providing us redemption after the fall through your son. Give courage to your church on earth so that it may always proclaim Christ crucified and raised from the dead. Let it constantly confess Jesus as your only begotten son and beloved servant, who bears and heals the world's sin, sorrow, and suffering, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we also ask that you would bless the ministry and people of our congregation. Conform our worship and works to Christ. Use us to bring his healing, forgiveness, and support to those who need it most. We also ask that you would increase our love of learning, zeal for service, and warmth of spirit. We pray for all those involved in the ministry here, for our Sunday school teachers, our Sunday school students. We pray for our Bible studies, for our choirs, our committees, and all activities done here to shine the love of Jesus upon others. Bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for our leaders as well as for our military and all in law enforcement. We ask that you protect them from evil. Give them wisdom as they serve and help them carry out their duties in accordance with your will on earth. We also today pray for all who are suffering. We ask that you send patience, relief, healing, and strength according to your will. We lift up Aaron, Brad, Barb, Eric, Fonzo and Angel, David, Henry and his family, Mike, and Tomo. We continue to lift up those whose lives have been impacted by Hurricane uh, Ida or because of wildfires. We continue to remember uh, those throughout the world who are suffering, whether it be in Afghanistan with the recent events that have happened there. There's much suffering out there. Use your people to provide relief. And we ask that you would give wisdom to the leaders so that, that people may be protected. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember today the family of Randy Matter who passed away this last week. We think of his wife, Sherry, and daughter, Cassie, and all the many lives that he came in contact with. Lord, just grant them peace during this most difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you would answer our prayers according to your holy will and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament lesson comes from the third chapter of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, 
They are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to the ninth chapter of St. Mark. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed, and ran up to him and greeted him. He asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy. And he fell to the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for those who believe. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Oh, 
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear again these words from the Gospel lesson for today. And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams. He grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I ask your disciples to cast it out, but they were not able. A few verses later, Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And the father replied, from childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out, I believe. Help my unbelief. In 10 days, on September 22nd, the autumnal equinox will occur in the northern hemisphere. That is when we will have equal amounts of daylight and night during a 24-hour period. Even if you are not looking at a calendar, you know that that day is coming. My wife and I observe that it seems like every night we are flipping on the lights in our house earlier and earlier. Now, one of the things that my wife loves to do as we experience more darkness at, during the day is to light candles. In a room where it is dark and where it is night outside, if a candle is glowing, your eyes are just drawn to it. It brings a certain ambiance to that room. However, that same candle if lit during daylight or when the, all the, the lights are on in the house, it will not have that, that same feeling. You might not even see that it is lit. But when the room becomes dark, the candle becomes more noticeable. In some ways, we could say the same thing about our faith in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit has brought us to trust in Jesus and to love him. The Holy Spirit has brought that flame of faith in us and it is shined, it shines. But sometimes from our perspective, it is more evident and sometimes not as evident. When everything is going well, our faith may be on, 
autopilot and we regularly pray and, and go to worship. They're part of our, our life. And when things are going well, we may fail to see that that faith is, is really burning brightly in us, just as it might be hard to see a candle burning in the middle of a day. But when things start to fall apart and when darkness comes into our lives, it may seem like our faith, though it is a small candle, all of a sudden we see it glowing. This experience can be painful, but it also can be positive. Henry, who had rarely come to church, all of a sudden is regularly worshiping. Why? Because his marriage has fallen apart, and he has come to see that Jesus is the one who brings light into the darkness of his life. Margaret's prayer life has increased dramatically. Why? Because doctors found cancer in her. When troubles darken our lives, when illness comes upon us or the lives of those we know, we may see our faith in Jesus glowing in the midst of darkness around us. But sometimes this is not the case. Instead of our faith glowing or, or being seen in our dark lives, sometimes it weakens. Yes, many people have come back to church after relationships have fallen apart, but some do not. Many people, once they hear of, of illness in their lives or in the lives of others, will, will pray more earnestly. They will reach out to brothers and sisters in Christ. They will pick up their Bible and read devotions. But there are others who will look elsewhere for healing and hope. Whenever darkness comes upon us, there's a possibility that our faith may waver. We may also see a, a deeper questioning of God and a growing reluctance to believe in anything at all. Our prayers may be filled with, with questions, with anxiety, with, with fear, and maybe even with anger. Now, the gospel lesson for today addresses people of faith who are experiencing darkness. It calls us to stop pretending that faith is always going to get stronger when troubles come our way. Sometimes it gets weaker. The Gospel of Mark wants us to come face to face with this ugly reality so that we could come face to face with our beautiful Savior. Consider the father who brought his child to Jesus. Jesus. At first, the father's heart was, was filled with hope. He came to Jesus and, and then he was met by the disciples. And the disciples were at one time able to cast out demons. But this time, they were not able. And his heart, I'm sure, sunk. Then his heart was filled with frustration as the religious leaders started arguing with the disciples. While his son suffers, all they want to do is argue about religion. Who casts out demons? When? Where? And how? And by the time Jesus arrives, the father has had it. It seems like his heart is almost all empty of faith. They bring the child before Jesus and the spirit, as if to demonstrate its power, throws the child to the ground. The son rolls at Jesus' feet, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asks his father, how long has the spirit been tormenting him? And he replies, from childhood. And then he goes on to describe how sometimes the spirit throws his son in water to drown him. Or other times the, the spirit throws him into fire to burn him. The spirit is always seeking to, to hurt, maim, or kill. The, the demon has taken the joy of childhood and replaced it with suffering. The demon has taken the joy of, of fatherhood and replaced it with fear. And it seems as if this demon has taken the power of faith 
and made it seem foolish. And so the father reaches down deep into his heart and brings out his very last plea. He says to Jesus, if you can, have compassion on us and help us. Suddenly, Jesus is troubled by something more than the evil spirit and the child rolling on the ground. Jesus is troubled by the father falling away from faith. So before Jesus does anything for the child, Jesus speaks some tough love to the father. If you can, Jesus says, he wants the father to hear his doubt. Jesus brings the father face to face with his faith, which is failing, so that he could bring him face to face with himself, the Savior. The beauty of this message is found in how Jesus holds on to people who seem to be walking away from him or people who seem to be slipping into darkness. The father believes, but he doesn't believe. He tries, but it almost seems like he has given up trying. He holds on, but yet it seems like he has already let go. So he confesses to Jesus, I believe, but, but help my unbelief. And with this, these words, it is as if the Father speaks actually for all humanity and for you and me as well. He speaks on behalf of all of us and brings all of our weakness and stumbling, all of our doubting and grumbling, all of our skepticism and, and weariness, and he sets it before Jesus. And when Jesus comes face to face with the ugliness, of not just this man's sins, but ours, Jesus brings this man, as well as you and me, his grace. Jesus is a savior. He came to save. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. A weak faith he will not deny. Jesus came to die for all people. Those who have a strong faith, those who have a weak faith. Those who seem to have faith which is faltering, as well as those people who have no faith at all. And when Jesus dies on the cross, he dies for the sin of doubt, of worry, of unbelief, so that when he rises, forgiveness may be brought to everyone. I mentioned at the beginning of this message that we are experiencing less daylight hours and, and more night. As I've mentioned throughout this message, there's also not just darkness out there as the sun goes down, but darkness that creeps into our life with fears, with worries, with sickness, with pain, with sorrow, with broken relationships. Being a Christian does not exempt us from this type of darkness entering into our lives. But because Jesus not only died but rose again, we are able to view our lives in the light of eternity. And with that in mind, the darkness that you and I experience here on earth we should only see as something which lasts for a short season. Though they cast their shadow over us, they do not reign. Jesus is King and Lord of all. And when he returns, we are reminded that he will transform our mortals, mortal bodies, to be like his glorious one. In the book of Revelation, we are also reminded that when Jesus Christ comes again, there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, we could say, no more darkness in our lives. Again, the beauty of, of this gospel lesson for today reveals how Jesus is the one who comes not just for those who are strong in faith, but for those who are weak and feel like their faith is, is failing. We also observe as Jesus exercises his, his authority, not only over the evil spirit, but over death itself, that no power, no demon, no devil, and not even death itself is ultimately our Lord and Master. Jesus is. And even when we have our doubts, remember that there is no doubt that God cares for you. 
in Romans, St. Paul reminds us, if God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not certainly along with him graciously give us all things? And then he goes on to say something just so beautiful and so profound. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So if you are experiencing darkness in your life now, or if it ever comes, hold on to Jesus. Be strong and courageous. He is the light that will get you through any darkness that you experience. Amen. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hold. Shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley, he will lead. All oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold. My sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. All oh, the chains are released. I can sing, I am free, and not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold. Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. Oh,
Thank you for joining us today, and I hope that the music, the message, touched your life in a very special way. This week ahead is exciting because we're starting up all kinds of new things. Rally Sunday is next week. <laughs> next week. And we're, uh, we'll are we be having our Sunday school start then. Um, some other activities which are, we're trying to get back to normal after this, this pandemic. Um, Whatever normal is going to look like. Yeah but we seek to do it in a safe way. And we encourage you to participate if, if possible. Also, we thank you very much for the support that you continue to give to Trinity through your prayers, through your care of others, as well as through your financial offerings. And we ask that you would continue to do so. As we conclude our service, we invite you to pray the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you, May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my strength, with, with all that I have. I will sing that everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. There is a river that flows unrestrained from your heart. Canyons of mercy so deep I could Praise the Lord.
Students.